Good morning. Welcome to our fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And a, a special warm welcome to all us fathers. We also extend a warm greetings to our visitors, if any, and to our viewers on Eastlink, on YouTube, and to those listening on radio. A special welcome today to Reverend Byron Corkum, who is leading us in our worship service this morning. I invite your attention to the announcements found in the bulletin. I intend to blame any of the mistakes I make this morning on the um, teacher who wrote the script. And your spelling is getting a C minus. Next Sunday, the 23rd of June, following worship service, you're requested to attend the annual June Congregational Meeting. Now, this meeting requires a quorum, so it's important that you show up so we can have the meeting. We have the report booklet outside for your reading enjoyment. It'll also be available this week at the office and it's important that you have this opportunity to review prior to the meeting on the 23rd. The combined summer worship schedule begins with the congregation joining First Baptist for five weeks and following that, five weeks here. The first starts on the 30th of June at the Baptist and goes through to the 28th of July. Then it's our turn here at Trinity, uh, five weeks starting on the 4th of August and running through to the 1st of September. I have a note here, anyone who would like to be part of the summer choir is invited to come and help with the hymns, either at one or the other of the churches or both. The worship committee on behalf of the congregation wants to thank very much Ron Bickle and Andrew Bickle. And we're all aware of the work they do in videotaping and broadcasting our weekly worship services. Today's service will be, yeah, amen. And today's service will be the last broadcast until September. So you're welcome to a wonderful break in acknowledgement of the absolutely excellent work you do, and many thanks. After today's service, the choir is going to get their summer break and will return in early September, and we want to wish them a well-deserved break. We thank them and Jeff for the outstanding music that they bring to our worship service each Sunday. Yeah, yeah. They certainly are a real gift to this community of faith and add so much. Groups meeting this week are the Council of Elders, Board of Trustees, UCW, Unit 4, Shignecto UCW. Please refer to the bulletin for time and location of your meeting. The funeral service for the late Bob Burns will be held in our sanctuary on Thursday, June 20th at 2 p.m. The congregation and visitors are invited to share in coffee and conversation, either one or both, in Burgess Wall following today's service. Thank you and have a happy Father's Day. And now um, I call upon our organist, J. 
Jeff Jowdery and ask him uh, to make an announcement, please. Thanks, Sandy. As a society, and this usually includes the church, sometimes we're guilty of not showing appreciation to people who really deserve it until they're gone to glory. But, but I want to honor this morning someone who is very much alive and is seated in the choir behind me. Jeannie Milner has sung in the church choir here at Trinity St. Stephen's for 50 plus years. I think the actual number is 51, but really after 50 it gets a little blurry. Jeannie has gone through more directors of music during her tenure in the church choir than most volunteer singers do in a lifetime. Though her through her love of music, Jeannie's commitment to her faith and to her church is extraordinary. She seldom misses rehearsals and services and holds herself and the rest of us accountable. And I won't get into the many expressions of display when things go awry, but it's safe to say you can take the girl out of Glace Bay, but you can't, you know. <laughs> but with Jeannie, her love of music shows on her face with every note that she sings. Often when we have these moments of recognition, it's a subtle message that the person being recognized is being told that their time is up. In Jeannie's case, this couldn't be further from the truth. You see, a choir is made up of many different voices of many different vocal colors and abilities and personalities. And I'm truly blessed to be able to work with all of these talented people, well, most of them. Um, and everyone deserves recognition for the volunteer hours they put in week after week. But today we recognize someone who still continues, even after 51 years, to give selflessly to her church and to her choir. So, so today, um, for the choir's last service before the summer break, and on behalf of us all, I want to recognize and thank Jeannie for her years of service in the choir here at Trinity St. Stephen's. And Jeannie, if you'd come forward, please. You. I, I want to make a small presentation, and I've asked Gary, as chair of council and a former director of music here at Trinity St. Stephen, oh to present you with a small <laughs> Right, Jeannie, that you started in the choir when you were only 40 years old? <laughs> As we remember what it means to live in gratitude, let us give thanks for the indigenous people of this land. And let us remember we worship God in Mi'kmaq, the historic and unclaimed territory of the Mi'kmaq. As Christ's people, let us be people of love, trust, and reconciliation.
around us, God is looking for folks who will join in serving others. In our midst, Jesus is walking among us, tending our hearts, watering us with grace. From morning to evening, the Spirit is at work, gently tending this garden called life. The Spirit Let us pray. Living Christ, your earthly ministry was full of struggle as well as joy, yet you were faithful in following God's will. Breathe your spirit into our lives this hour, fortifying us that we may never drift away from each other and the discipleship to which we are called in Christ's name. May our worship serve to build a church where life-giving relationships are supported and nurtured in your holy name. Amen. God recognizes our humanness and realizes there are times we do not live up to what we've been called for. And so he forgives us with his grace, his love, and his kindness. So let us share together in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, we so often miss your kingdom at work among us. We overlook the mustard seeds you have planted and are beset by apathy in a world of such deep need. Forgive us for failing to notice where and how you are at work and how you are calling us to join you. Forgive us when we work against your plans and purposes, fostering divisions when you call us to ministries of reconciliation. Help us to grow in faithfulness, producing great works for kingdom living. We pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, Christ prays for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven and set free by God's generous grace. Rejoice in God's good gift. Reading this morning from 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 10 and 14 to 17. So, we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to be pleasing to him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive due recompense for actions done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for the one who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we no longer know him in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, new things have come into being. The Gospel of Mark, we read from chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. Again, Jesus said, God's kingdom is like what happens when a farmer scatters seed in a field. The farmer sleeps at night and is up and around during the day. Yet the seeds keep sprouting and growing, 
and he doesn't understand how. It is the ground that makes the seeds sprout and grow into plants that produce grain. Then when harvest season comes and the grain is ripe, the farmer cuts it with a sickle. Finally, Jesus said, what is God's kingdom like? What story can I use to explain it? It is like what happens when a mustard seed is planted in the ground. It is the smallest seed in all the world. But once it is planted, it grows larger than any garden plant. It even puts out branches that are big enough for birds to nest in its shade. Jesus used many other stories when he spoke to the people, and he taught them as much as they could understand. He did not tell them anything without using stories. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything to them. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to Christ the Word. the changes in our society, we don't very often recognize dads anymore, do we? Uh, it's a, a different change. Uh, but we have a lot of competition as fathers. Just in case you weren't sure, today is Fresh Veggies, veggies Day. It's also World Refill Day. And it's Natural Fudge Day. And this one may be closer to home, it's National Turkey Lover's Day. <laughs> and it's also No Orange Clothing Day. And it's World Sea Turtle Day. So how can we compete? 
But indeed, it is Father's Day, and we give thanks for all our fathers. If you are familiar with Happy Days, I always think of uh, Howie Cunningham as probably as good a dad as you're going to get. Not perfect, makes mistakes, but is willing to learn. Our God is an loving and caring person. And I have a difficult time. I can't yet change how do I talk about God. It still has to be a gender he. Uh, I can't call God it yet. And I'm sure we will come up for a title. But all too often, we find ourselves caught up in titles and names, don't we? We realize that the word father answers a whole spectrum of meanings, from the very best to the worst. Father is only a word and can mean such different things to each person. So it is with God. The designation Father may not elicit a good response from all people. In the Old Testament, there are many times when God as Father appears to be cruel and indifferent to his followers. Yet, with Jesus, the term becomes a more positive, caring, loving sense. Now, if we should call up down and down up, neither concept would change one bit, would it? The change is in us. The same is true as in our thoughts of the divine. The truth of the statement, God made the world, does not depend on whether we call God the supreme being creator. The truth of the statement, God will not abandon us, doesn't depend on whether or not we refer to the supreme being as divine providence. The truth of the statement, God wills us to share in his eternal happiness, does not depend on whether we say God's name is love. By any other name, those divine titles have no consequences in themselves. They are meaningful only to the extent that they genuinely reflect our understanding of them. It's been interesting, over the years of my ministry, I've been accused of having a God that loves too much. My God can never love too much. He is the essence of what true love is. We trust in God. We put our hope in our promises that we do not live and die in vain as this journey we have. The title Divine Love is just another name if we don't live it, profess it, and understand it in our relationship with God. An 85-year-old man was driving home from church one snowy Sunday evening. His car suddenly stalled as he passed through a shadowy, isolated stretch of road. He got out of the vehicle to check the engine, and as he raised the hood, he slipped and injured his leg. He nearly passed out from the pain, and he was unable to get up. Helpless, he could only hope that someone would pass by and help him out of the predicament. But no one passed by, and the man knew that he might die of exposure. And he thought, what a very undignified way to die. Well, about three hours later, a college student drove by. When he saw the man sitting on the ice, he stopped, covered him with his jacket, and quickly drove him to the nearest hospital. The student waited until he knew the man would be all right. Then he went on his way without a word. The only thing the hospital personnel could tell the man about the students and identity was the word providence written on his jacket. Later, the grateful man said, no one will ever convince me that this young man was merely a student at Rhode Island University. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus says to his disciples, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so the birds of the air can make nests in it. The kingdom of God is a mystery to us, isn't it? But we do not let our ignorance deprive us of making it our life's goal. God is an impenetrable mystery. We try as we hard to understand it completely, but we don't. In our ignorance, we can't let it deprive us of his experience of his wonderful presence in our daily living. 
and thought is a mystery. We can't let it deprive us of experiencing thinking. We are so optional. We often spend our time stuck in a rut. And we're afraid to experience new things or think new things. But we need to open ourselves up to those experiences. And if it's for you, like me, prayer is one of the greatest mysteries there is. We can't let our misunderstanding of it deprive us of the experience of praying. We don't know how it works, but we know it works. And divine providence is a mystery, but we shouldn't let us deprive ourselves of experiencing it in the reality of our living. There's a story of a nomad who lit a candle in his tent one night. He reached into a bowl and picked out a fig. He opened the fig and saw that there were beetles inside. So he threw it away. Then he took a second fig, opened it, and again saw bugs inside. And he threw that one away. At which point, he blew out the candle and in the darkness took a third fig and ate it. <laughs> we're like that sometimes, aren't we? When we don't know what won't hurt us, but we're living in the dark and we know it can hurt us. That's why Jesus came to bring us truth and light. And we know the light by the faith we have. More knowledge than is not a bad thing. It is not the end of all human experience either though. We learn by interacting with each other. And that's the joy of experiencing people in a church family. We come to understand each other. We see each other's needs and our hurts and our happiness. Jesus says, none of those who cry out, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. We can profess our faith, but we need to live it, make it a part of every moment we exist. As teenagers, there's a period in our life when we want to break away from our families. I couldn't wait to go to university to get away from home get away from the town I lived in to include in the city, be part of a much larger and more exciting world. And it's a healthy thing. And we would worry if young people didn't try to experience new things. But many of us get stuck in that rut as adolescents. We never go beyond that. There's a profound sense in which we become dissatisfied with life, and yet we're restless for something new. We were made for the kingdom of God, and we have to work at it all the time. The New Testament informs us that we discover the signs of God's love, not in fantasizing, but in experiencing commitment to each other and to ourselves. There's a little book called The Way of the Pilgrim, and it's a story of a 19th century Russian peasant who wandered from village to village, trying to obey the apostles' command to pray without ceasing. He repeated one prayer thousands of times a day until it became so much a part of him that it was as natural as his breathing. He did it to the rhythm of his breathing. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Breathing in and out countless times a day. And in this devotional book, The Way of the Pilgrim, he has the power of an Advent novel as it describes the peasant's journey and the amazing things that happened in his life because of continuous prayer. The, pring, uh, the peasant pilgrim said that the kingdom of God is sometimes in my heart when I'm feeling bubbling with joy, with such lightness, freedom, and consolation. Sometimes I feel a burning love for Jesus Christ and for all God's creatures. Everything draws me to love and thank God. People, trees, plants, animals. And sometimes my eyes brim with tears of thankfulness to God, who is so merciful to me, a wretched sinner. Sometimes my understanding, which has been so stupid before, is given so much light that I quickly grasp and dwell on matters that until now I never even thought of. Sometimes there's warmth in my heart, spreads throughout my whole being, 
and I'm deeply moved by the presence of God everywhere around me. I am overwhelmed with joy because I know the meaning of his words. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of God has been planted in each one of our hearts. It's with us, with your spouse, your children, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your neighbors, with strangers and enemies. But the speed only sprouts and grows when we plant it. We recognize our need for each other. We are immersed in the presence of God every day. We draw on it. We're immersed in the spirit of God's love and we draw on it. So today, experience God's love and be grateful. Let's take a moment for silent prayer. Let us share in our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. We give you thanks for June with roses and rains, for all that is good and alive and growing, for weddings and their anniversaries, for children counting the days to vacation, for times of summer reunion. We also thank you, gracious God, for the assurances of our faith that are beyond the changing of the seasons, for the promise of forgiveness and healing, for the resurrection and our trust in eternal life. Amen.
for growth. Bless the gifts we brought to you. Use the seeds of new life in our community and in the world. Grow is those we cannot even imagine who they ask. Among us, be proud of us, and beyond us. Gracious God, you hold all things in your hands. We may plant the seeds, but it is your mysterious power that brings forth growth. We play our small parts, but you awaken new life. Thank you for our place in your purposes. Guide our plans for ministry in the days ahead. Plant seeds of your kingdom in our midst. We pray for the work of this church and our government in pursuing truth and reconciliation with Canada's indigenous people. We pray for indigenous communities which lack clean water to drink and health care close at hand. And for all those mourning the loss of missing and murdered indigenous women and girls, guide decision makers to act with timely courage and compassion for justice to be done. Awaken understanding in those who feel no empathy for the struggle of others. On this day that celebrates fathers, we pray for families in war-torn communities where celebration is an impossible dream. We pray for fathers and families who face financial hardship and worry for the well-being of their children. We pray for any who feel empty or lonely this day, who fear the future or mourn the past. As summer holidays draw closer, guide our families to find meaningful opportunities to enjoy each other and the world on our doorsteps. Gracious God, you hold all things in your hand, including us. Be with all those who carry on in spite of loss or grief, and with those who face pain or uncertainty about the future. Keep us open to your Spirit's leading in all that we do with and for each other. Help us embody the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
walk gently on the earth. God is entrusted to us all and cherish. God's amazing creation, deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace to the Son of Peace to you. Amen. <laughs>